Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Let's shout hallelujah one more time. Um, we're grateful to God for the testimonies and um, the things he's doing in this ministry. You know that when the early church began, the Bible says in Acts 2.42 that they gave themselves to the doctrine of the apostles and then the breaking of bread and then fellowship. Then later, the Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and that it prevailed. And then God began to add to the church many souls as the spirit would choose. So it means that the foundation of a ministry, correct ministry, is not comedy, it's not jamboree, it's not guest minister, it's the word of God. So if you have been trained for the word of God, it's because you have a glorious future and the foundation must be accurate. Because the Bible says if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Go ahead and shout hallelujah! hallelujah! We bless you, Lord, you are holy. We return all the glory to our God. And forever you are We bless you, Lord, you are holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy Lord. We praise your name. You are holy. Holy Lord. Holy Lord. Holy Lord. Holy Lord. Hallelujah, 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 
for the power of your word we thank you for the anointing of your spirit we thank you for mercy that we have received for no man can do these things except you be with him thank you jesus oh lord our god how excellent is your name in all the earth father in our midst today glorify your name grant light and understanding oh let somebody have an encounter today be exalted father in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Right. One year of God's faithfulness in our Sunday meetings. Really thank God for everyone who is here today, both those that are coming for the first time. Uh, really good to see you. Thank you very much for coming. Our brothers from uh, Futa, God bless you. Our brothers from Government. And sister, God bless you. My neighbors who live right in the same compound, who know whether I be Christian or not, they are here. So that's a good sign. Let's celebrate my neighbors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Can we celebrate the choir? That was an anointed and simple. Amen. All right. Setting right priorities. Let's go straight into the word. Setting right priorities. Setting right priorities. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody in our midst tonight who has been asking God certain questions with respect to the delay that you are experiencing on a particular matter. Very important matter, but you have been asking the Lord about the issue. It's concerning delay. It's all right, like something is slower than you have expected. Uh, by the word today, you will receive your answer. Amen. Your name is to be alone. Uh, all right, Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. You know the story how that Jesus went to visit and that Mary and Martha, okay, were busy. But uh, Martha was the one busy with the cooking. Do you remember? She was busy with the ops ministry. And so she was combat with many things. And the Bible says that um, she now went to meet Jesus. Are you not going to tell Mary to come and assist me? I've been trying my best. I've been busy doing something. But um, Jesus would say something in verse 41 and 42. I want us to see that. Can we read together? One, two, three. And Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. One, two, ready, read. And Jesus answered and said unto her martha martha thou art careful and troubled about many things but one thing is needful and mary has chosen that path which shall not be taken from he says you are busy with many things so there are two things we see there we see many things and then we see one thing when we talk about setting right priorities or setting your priorities right, the word priority simply means importance. The word priority simply means scale of preference. The word priority talks about something you give more value to than other things that are also important.
There are many on the face of the earth today, especially Christians, because my business is with Christians today, not <laughs> because if you do not have the life of God in you, no matter how diligent you are, it's the prosperity of fools, it will destroy you. So I'm talking to Christians today. If you're a Christian, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There are many things, but there is one thing. So there are many Christians on the face of the earth who have heard the word of God, who have the Holy Spirit, who pray a lot, but they have not come to understand the principle of the one thing. When we talk about priority, we are saying that what you value determines to a large extent your level of maturity. When we look at what you value in your life, what comes first, what comes second, what comes next, what comes now, what comes later, you are actually showing us that your scale of preference is a reflection of your value system. So that means that your daily priorities reveal to us the kind of person that you really are. Know what you do on Sunday. Anybody can dress like an angel on Sunday and be a demon on Monday. So while your value reveals your maturity, your priorities will be shown all right, by your daily activity. So we can look at what you have done today or what you will do tomorrow and see if your life is in the direction of God's plan or you are just living for yourself. God's order, God's design is not that you should not do something. But it's that first things must be first. It's the principle of the first. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is there. First fruits, first. First born son, Abi, first. Here in Luke chapter 10, Jesus said to Martha, you are busy, but you, are, you will not be productive like that. You have to first focus on the one thing. Many of us do too many things. That's why we are not becoming anything. We must be people of one thing. Tell your neighbor one thing. one thing. That means that anytime we focus on the most important things, our life would gravitate towards greatness. But when we focus on many nice things and neglect the most important thing, let me give an example. How many of you have ever traveled here before? Not traveled out. Okay, traveled out of Akure before. Say the truth now. Yes. Um, imagine when you were traveling. I, I know it's common with Lagos drivers. I don't know about the drivers of your own region. But imagine you went to the filling station. You loaded your vehicle with petrol. But there's no water in the carburetor. Okay, there's no tire. There's only three legs of, three tires are there. The fourth one, he said he borrowed his friend. <laughs> will you be able to get to where you are going? What if he said, okay, we will tie rope. Will it work? Why? Because although fuel is important, fuel is not the only thing that is important. So what God wants is that there is priority to our lives. There is order. A disordered life can never make a mark. When Jesus came, in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, the angel was introducing Jesus to Mary. And he was showing us the priority of the life and the ministry of Jesus upon the face of the earth. He says to Mary, Hail Mary, thou art blessed and highly favored, all right, amongst the women. And then he says, you see that seed that is in you is actually the son of God. You will call his name Emmanuel. For he will save his people from their sins. Meaning that the assignment of Jesus was already present before Jesus was born. Your purpose was existing before you came. It's not after you were born. God now says, Purpose precedes birth. Because eternity is superior to time. Whatever you will become in God has been programmed, pre-planned for you in eternity. That's what we call predestination. You are just a walk in it. Hallelujah. Let's see, let's see some, some more scriptures to be sure. In John chapter 4, there is a principle there in the New Testament. You see, especially King James Version, you will see the word must needs. Must needs. John chapter 4, verse 4. Remember the story of the woman at the well, right? The Samaritan woman. Who remembers that story? Let's read John chapter 4, verse 4. Let's see if it's there. We are Bible opening people. <laughs> are you ready? Let's read one to go. And... He must needs go through Samaria. The word must needs, must needs. That means it's a, it's, a, it's a risky thing to not go. Is that true? If you say he must go, would I say, okay. He say he must needs, meaning as a matter of urgency and necessity. What comes first is not eating meat. Because they will get to a point in that same territory 
where Jesus would be hungry and his disciples. Is that true? The disciples will go and buy bread and fish and just meet and Jesus will be there talking to a woman because that woman be becomes the key to that entire territory. Why? He said he must need to go through Samaria because his ministry will not be complete if he did not go through Samaria. Why? Priority determines how you spend your money. Priority affects how you spend your time. But what gives birth to your priority really is the vision of God for your life. So vision determines priority. Vision influences your priority. Vision affects the direction of your finance. Vision is the blueprint of heaven for your life. He must needs go through Samaria. Let's see something else in the Old Testament. Are you catching something already? We are going to work this thing today. Look at um, 2 Kings chapter 5. We'll try 2 Kings, then we'll try uh, another scripture. But let's see 2 Kings chapter 5. Look at verse 16. If you love the word, say, I love the word. All right. You know the story of Naaman the Syrian that was a great man, but he was a leper. So Naaman would come to the prophet and the prophet would tell him, go wash in Jordan seven times. And he, after the seventh time, you'll be okay. And he was suggesting to the prophet, negotiating his miracle and telling the prophet, I, I prefer my own personal preference. Can I go to Abana and Pafa? And the prophet tells him, I don't have time for all this. Then people told him, uh, uh, if you told him to go and fight, well, will you not go? Okay, go. When he was healed, the Bible makes it clear that he brought gifts to the prophet. Tell, tell him about prophet's offering. It has been seen. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> it's not, uh, hallelujah. Okay. I want to say it's not us that invented it, but I don't know if I receive, uh, receive such. He says something important I want you to pay attention to. He says that when he brought the gift to the prophet, look at verse 16, see what he says. But he said, I, as the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, oh yeah, let's read now, I will receive none, and he urged him to take it. But he, when it comes to priority, we are saying that timing is everything. It's not wrong to bring gifts to prophets. If prophets were not receiving gifts before, they would not have brought that one. Hello. <laughs> Timing is everything. That it is right does not mean it is the right time. Hello. That marriage is right does not mean it's the right time to get married. That business is good does not mean it is now that you must do the business. Hello, sir. That relationship is a good thing does not mean it is now. That Valentine is coming does not mean our summer must be on Valentine. Are, are you together? Are you together? Amen. No. Somebody may see our flyer today and say, priority. You should talk about relationship. It's not the talks that galvanizes our ministry. It's the ministry of the word and the Holy Spirit that tells us what to emphasize per time. Are you together? Our curriculum is not earth based, it's from heaven. Our manual has been given before we were born, called, and sent. So we must do according to what is already written. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor we are following the script. He said to him, Take it away. I don't want. He refused it. Look at verse 26. Oh, yeah. You know, one of my assignments is to make you love the word of God. Look at verse 26. Can we read together? One, two, go. And he said unto him, This is Geazi. Uh huh. Went not my heart with, with thee. When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, uh huh. Is it a time? I want you to ask it the way your parents will ask you when you do something wrong. Go ahead. One, two, go. Is it a time to receive money? Uh huh. And to receive garments, uh huh, and oliveyards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servant, and men servant. Ask your neighbor, is it the time? Paul said, All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. So it is good, it is a lovely thing, but is are you is are you ready for it? Is it the time? Okay, read the next verse to be sure whether it's the time or not. We'll find out. Verse 27, go. The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. Aye. The son of a prophet, in the presence of a prophet, carried the cost that a prophet took away from another man. Why is it the time? Listen, they must have been bringing gifts before, and the prophet said, Oh, yeah, you will not bat here because the son of the prophet. But that day, it was leprosy. 
And in ancient times, you see, theologically, when you there are certain gifts you bring that it's not every gift you receive. It's even a wisdom, even for a Christian. It's not every gift that you want. Don't say every good and perfect gift. <laughs> Be careful. It's not every gift. One of the reasons why the prophet, there are a few reasons, all right? Theologians have said there are different reasons. But I feel that one of the reasons why the prophet did not collect the gift is because the prophet wanted Naaman to, because Naaman was a very kingly man. He works at the royal level. He was a royal emissary. He was a soldier. He had the means. He had the resources. But the prophet wanted him to know that there is a God that is bigger than your throne. Bigger than your military might. Jehovah, Elohim. So we will not take from you, but we can give you something from heaven. Because what money cannot buy, the Holy Ghost can give it. So he said, we'll give you something. But unfortunately, Naaman pursued the material things. He ignored the inheritance. Was it not better for him to receive a double portion of the spirit of Elisha than for him to carry leprosy of Naaman? Ask your neighbor again, is it the time? It is good to start ministry. Is it the time? It's a good to pursue a course. But check again. Is it the time? Imagine a woman is pregnant. Not like our mommy here is pregnant. In the name of Jesus, she will deliver safely. Amen. When it is time, do you see that? She will deliver what? A woman gets pregnant and on the seventh month, because of much excitement, she wants, she goes to sit down in the labor room and say, hospital, I've come over. Then she's dancing. You know what the midwives will tell her? Is it the time? They say, bring your card. I don't know if they still used to use Antinata. In our own time, when we were young, they used to use Antinata card. Hallelujah. Do you know Antinata? Uh, you don't know. They will be jumping. They will be doing exercise. <laughs> they will check your card. They say, how many weeks now? Ah. They say, oh, it's almost time. Uh, you can bring your things to the hospital. And you may be there for some days. Is that true? When it is not time, we they invite you to come. Some things you are praying for and know what you need now. What you need is preparation, not prayer. Why? Because when the time comes, they will send for you. And may you be ready when your time comes. Amen. Joseph told that man in the dungeon, Oga, if you get there, I've, I've, I've interpreted dream to you. No form I had. Help me. The Bible says after two full years. Tell your neighbor, two full years. Two full years means 24 months. Complete. Tell your neighbor, complete. <laughs> ah! You know what happened? The man's problem was solved, but the man forgot Joseph. Why? Because according to divine providence, Joseph must be fully baked so that we will not become an unturned cake like Ephraim. That will be left alone later. Huh. The reason why some things you call delay are happening is not because Satan is against you. It's because God himself is hindering you from destroying yourself. Some of you were rushed into something, but God said, hey, come back. Not because you don't have sense. It's just that you don't have stamina yet. Are you together? Yes, a primary school boy understands traffic laws, but you cannot send him to the express. Why? It's not time yet. Knowledge is not the proof that you are ready for something. You need more than knowledge. You need to be in the right timing. You need maturity. You need character. Are we together? How are you preparing for destiny? In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Your name is to be alone. Adonai. Ah, somebody's life will change today. You know, Paul was writing to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. He says, all right, my son Timothy, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. Do you remember? And then he says, no man that wore it. No man that wore it entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has called him to be a soldier. He now says that um, if a man also strive for mastery, I wrote a book on it, striving for the mastery. He says, is, is he not temperate in all things? What it means is that if you are striving for the mastery, if you see people preparing for the Olympics, sometimes some of them prepare three years before time for the Olympics. I ran a 10 kilo kilometer race um, maybe last year or two years ago. I've been preparing for that race for many months. Running from Okejebu to the airport, Accra airport, to and fro every morning. Why? Because I was preparing for a race. He said, he that striveth for the mastery. Listen, the way to redeem time is to strive for the mastery. Because when you become a master, what I mean by master is, no, I'm not talking of pride. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. When you become a master, when you have spiritual understanding, like the sons of Issachar, you can decipher times and seasons. 
you understand what to be done and you are able to do it, you will redeem the time. Because when you talk about redeeming the time for the days are evil, Ephesians 5, 8, 14, he's actually talking about chronological time and then the appointed time, the opportune time. Many people lose opportunity because, because they don't understand the principle of priority. In fact, an opportunity can come and you see that it's an opportunity. But because your priorities were wrong, you were not preparing for that day. So the day came, you were there, but you could not assess the blessing. Are you together? If you are with me, say amen. amen. <sighs> Timing is everything. Your values determine your priorities. Your priorities reveal your sense of value. The scripture says, but where is ma a man's heart is, there will his treasure be also. Or where his treasure is, that's where his heart will be. Both of them go together. Because the direction of your heart is often in the direction of your treasure. So we can know what you value, whether it is Netflix or the word of God, by the time you give to the two. Priority. As a young person, okay, we have somebody of maybe eight years old here. Let's say from 12 to 30. What should I have done with my life from 12 to 30? There are people today, some of you know, elders around us who might have lived for 72 years and the only prayer people around them are praying for them to experience now is death. Have you seen people like that? They say we're only praying for him to die. Meaning that his existence is already becoming a body. The scripture says you should be fruitful even in old age. Meaning that there is something that should be coming from you even as you are getting older. Meaning you are not wasting by getting older. You are becoming more effective. Hallelujah. Dreams don't come to pass because of lack of priority. If I were to ask you now, what is your dream? There is, there's nothing wrong with dreaming. In fact, there's nothing really bad with ambition. As long as it's a good ambition that glorifies God. It's not everything that must be a vision that must come from heaven. Sometimes you can decide something in the name of Jesus with the right motive and it's a good thing. Because Paul had an ambition to travel to a territory. Hallelujah. Dreams don't come to pass because of lack of priority. Priority is the key to effective decision making. Priority. Effective decision making. In John 4, Jesus' impact was so powerful that that woman went to the territory and began to invite people. The woman became an evangelist the minute she became born again. It's just that she didn't do signs and wonders. But at least she evangelized in a way by calling people for the word of God. She, she became an inviter. Hmm. Jesus was more focused on impact than on crowd. Anything you do, if you want it to really last, don't focus on what people will say. Focus on impact. What will God say? And how will it help other lives? Are you still with me? Priority is the key to effective decision making. Imagine Jesus say, okay, okay, since it's meat, meat too, I'm hungry, Jare, and he went to eat meat. The woman will fetch her water and walk away. And that may be the last day of that woman on earth. Meaning the woman will go to hell because Jesus misplaced priority. But not my Jesus. Thank God for my Jesus. He knew what to do for time. In fact, there was a time the children, um, the disciples, in Acts chapter 1, they said, will you at this time restore again the, the kingdom to Israel? Oh, Jesus said, you still don't know that I'm not a political messiah. He said, it is not given to you to know the time that the Father has put in his own hands. He says, but. What will you receive, sir? That's what you need. Because, listen, time becomes a burden when purpose is not being fulfilled. He says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you will be with, meaning the assignment of power is to fulfill God's purpose. Power without purpose will lead to tyranny. You become a dictator. You become like a demon. How are that falling? Oh, Lucifer, star of, star of the morning. The ones anointed cherub that cover it. You had an assignment from God, but because of your beauty, you were carried away. Iniquity was found in you and you were cast down. His existence now has become a body. Why? When purpose is ignored, your existence becomes a cause. Priority restrains you from wasting time, from wasting resources. Hallelujah. Priority 
What did I say? Priority restrains you from wasting time, resources, energy. You are a single lady. And the young men around you are coming. Glory be to God. But you know that many of them really do not have a vision for their life and their future. And even you know that you don't really have a sound work with God. That means that what you need now is not a relationship. Because a relationship is going to demand from you. What you need now is to first build your work with God. Then begin to live for God's purpose. Then get a job or get a work. Get something doing with your life. Start aiming at a level or start a business. Then from there, you can now begin to make time as some of these things come. If you do relationship before purpose, before job, you may have what we call misplaced priority. Because as a young man, you are not earning any dime, but you are madly in love. It may be that love that will kill you. Because when the girl calls you, you know women, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> they can call. Ooh, the Lord gives you understanding. They can call you. If they call you for two minutes, you, you now say, eh, eh, she now says, ah, oh, my credit, she can even cut it and say, oh, my credit has almost finished. You, you now come back and say, oh, your credit has almost finished. Okay, don't worry, let's keep talking. For like five minutes, she may just be laughing. I say, ah, even the weather today, you are like, hey, listen, they say seven minutes I have. Then MTN has a way of making you feel bad. I tell you, your credit remains 30 seconds. Before you know, you start borrowing money. Why? Priority has been misplaced. You know, somebody has rightly said that if the purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse of it is inevitable. Nothing wrong with relationship, but is it time? Hey, you don't need to have all the money to have relationship. It's true. But do you have vision first? Vision. Vision. Vision for your future. Where are you going? What's your life going to be about? Because if the blind leads the blind, they will end up in the ditch. We have to be sure. Our ladies, let me encourage. We have a lot of... If you're a single lady, you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, some are not shouting. Okay, let me... If you're a single lady, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Before you say yes to a man, at least, at least, ask him where he's going. He may not know 100%, too. Because even me, I don't know 100%. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. But at least let's see a sign, right? Let's know that you are heading somewhere. Listen, vision fuels discipline. When a young man calls you any time of the day, he may not, he may not know what he's doing. He can just call you 2 a.m. and say, ah, and you, know, you, don't, you don't even know how I feel about you. Now. I, just, I just feel happy about you. 2 a.m. No. And you, you, you think you pick, you say, ah, hey, brother, lie, wala, brother, lie. Hey. Then you roll on the bed, say, brother, lie, wala, brother, lie, wala. <laughs> the Lord gives you understanding. I just thought about you. 2 a.m. I just thought about you. Are you sure it's not the spirit of lust? 2 a.m. Thought about you. The whole time, listen, when the lady knows that you don't have principles as a man, it's a red flag. The, if the lady is well taught, she already knows you, you don't have principles. Because you that you are calling any time of the day, you may be doing all that dangerous things any time of the day. Or if the man knows you don't have principles, any time he calls you, as he's doing, pam, 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 you are picked. Ah, ah. Do you live, does your phone live inside you or something? As he's, he does not even have pam, pam, Why the person is trying to talk to his friend? Ah, et amoti be lata aro, amoti be lata aro, amoti be lata Ah, ah. Let you ring a little. Hallelujah. Okay, the Lord give you understanding. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your daily decisions. One of the things I've noticed about many uh, young people is that we like deep things but our love for deep things is not really to understand deep things as deep things we just want something high that will make us feel um, you know what i learned today jesus is the menorah in the midst of the cherubim say ah, menorah oh let us respond to menorah oh menorah bros that's not how we put food on your table you need revelation and sense are you together here amen are you still are you still following tonight because our journey is fun. The quality of your life is determined by what, sir? The quality of your daily decisions. Meaning that when you wake up in the morning, and this is the extreme, 
you wake up in the morning and you you chant in tongue for five hours you say ah uh, martin luther said if i have more things to do every day i will pray more every day that is good but don't go to the extreme your, your job in your workplace you were employed to resume 7 30 and close five you, you are now you woke up 5 30 you are now chanting in tongues for five hours you will get there late although your activity seems spiritual when it was time for you to leave and you didn't leave god will be glorified but even the angels will know that on this one now you are wrong because you can be praying to god on your way to your work after you have done your normal quiet time is that true when you don't put priorities right christianity starts looking like a scam have you seen people say ah, but you have been serving jesus all this why why don't you have money it's because there may be some principles of finance that you have ignored but it's only principles of tongues that you know hallelujah you know how to get people filled with the holy ghost in 10 minutes you are a master at that one but you are not a master of your finance you are just traveling you just see balenciaga balenciaga they don't say it's 35 balenciaga of 35 should you not know that it's an attack because that will be balancing gang gang gang. Then you bought it. Then, <laughs> then you quickly go to the rich man house in front of your area. Then you stand there and say, Ooh, so only, or you just sing one song for them. Message two words for them. Priority. The quality of your daily decision. When you wake up in the morning, what should you do first? Talk to the one that made you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. And what's up? You can't wake up in the morning and you quickly check uh, Tinubu. Bulabal in early as you are waking up four thirty, you just take. Eh, I, I don't, I, I, that's what you are taking. Then you say, Lord, let there be revelation to the the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ura ba ba ba. Then you say, bros, the ulabal you have watched has altered your pro. You see, human beings are like machines in a way. There is there is a programming. Listen, you don't just build habit automatically. It takes a while. Christians who are used to morning devotion hardly ever stop it. Even when they say they are not following Jesus again, early in the morning, they wake up, they will not know what to do. Why? Because the body is wired that way to follow the rule and the routine of habit. If you want to be very powerful, let me teach you what to do. Invest in developing the right quality habit early. Waking early is part of it. When you wake up, making your bed is part of it. Are you together? Putting your toothbrush in the right place is what's up. It's part of don't throw your toothbrush on the bed, and one day your friends will come. One came from America, and you will not know, and you will not know that you have not arranged your room in your mind. You have arranged it. Then, as that one just enter, he saw toothbrush, saw pot, he saw ah, by inside pot. How, how, what's the mathematics? Brothers, the Lord give you understanding. You wear one box for three days, then you, you put it in the sun. Rather than wash it, you put it in the sun. You say, don't wash the sun. There's, there's a, there's a germ-killing agent inside the sun. The Lord give you understanding. <laughs> May you not sweat in the wrong time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Quality decisions. What's your early morning like? What's your 24 hour like? We can simply do a test now. And say, right away, you do your 24 hours. And you will be surprised that what many spend their 24 hours doing can never get them to where they say that God is taking them. Say, ah, I shall be great. You know all those morning, you know, have you seen those morning confessions? Some of you used to, do, you know, on WhatsApp. WhatsApp now is a money affirmation platform. You will hear, give me, Peter, give me one. Uh, up and grateful. Uh-huh. This, today, I will be the most celebrated in Africa today. All my dreams are valid today. <laughs> Today, today, uh, today, must be, uh, January, please be good. Though. Is January a woman? Be? Uh, February, please oh, uh, be kind. Oh, February. Job did not teach us that. He said, as thou commanded the money. He didn't say beg the money. He said, command it. That's why those that rule in the day are those that have taken their nights to prepare for the day. Jesus, a great while before day, went to a sacred place, a secret place, and there he prayed. He didn't go there and was checking Facebook. How are you doing? Rabakata bakabo. But you are responsible to say, Eshego, Eshego, Rabakata, Eshego. In private, quiet time, not when you are doing something else. Anybody who does not give God his own place in his life 
it will also miss in place in life. Because it is God that gifts men that also lifts men. Are you following? If you don't give God his place in your life, you will miss your place in life. Our God is an awesome God he reigns from heaven above with wings. The power love our God is an awesome God. Imagine you wake up in the morning. Let's sing it one more time. You close your eyes or you open your eyes. Early in the morning, there is no much noise. That time, there is nobody trying to hear whether your path was correct. Because God loves the voice, the actions of an obedient Christian. Meaning if your voice is good, but God does not have the first place in your life. Your voice is like cacophony in the ears of heaven. No matter how sonorous it sounds on the face of the earth. But if your voice is not too good, uh, but your life is a life of obedience, and you sing, Our God is an awesome God he reigns from heaven above with wish. The power, love of God is an awesome God. And you know that what you are doing is you are setting the tone knowing that you will fulfill God's purpose that day. Even angels want to come and worship with you. But when you are in disobedience, even if you play Theophil on Sunday, in disobedience, heaven will not clap for you. I will pray. I will pray. If, if I don't pray, Satan will make much of me. I will pray. I will pray, I will pray, oh, if, if I don't pray. Now, that song is a good song to start you up. But that song is not prayer. That song is, I will pray. That song is not prayer. I, hello? Are you guys, are you together? I say, I will pray. It didn't say, I am praying. It's an advice. So, when you are not praying, you don't need to say, I am praying. The way you will know is, you'll be praying. <laughs> don't say, I am praying, you know, because if I'm not praying, bros, pray. <laughs> because now, I know in the prayer program, yeah, are we praying? Are we praying? Oh, bros, we have heard that you will pray. Don't use one hour telling us you will pray. Can you? Can you? Come in. Hallelujah. But can you pray in tongues one minute? Thank you, Jesus. Elabo Shadabayagade Arabasani Anamani Ye 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 Olua, 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 I am back at the head. Please open your eyes. This week, somebody's life is about to change. Listen, because decisions affect destiny. When your decision changes, especially as a product of a change of mind, because there are people that change their actions, but their minds have not changed. Because you change your actions does not mean things will change. If your action changes and your mind does not change, you do not sustain the capacity to continue doing the right thing even when you are not seeing results. But when your mind changes and you know that what I'm doing, it will give results. Even when it does not look like it, you will continue. Is that true? I want to do the road to Lua. I want to do the road to Lua. It may not look like it, but you wait. I will be a book of BG. 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 This year, you will experience God's glory. I will be a book of BG. Listen. The way out of, of depression is to check your priority. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, he says, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. You know what that means? What God has given you is more than enough. 
It's just that your priority is wrong. You are looking at what others have. Are you with me? Saul gave David his armor. David said, I don't need it. I'm okay with the stone. Some of you need to be okay with the stone that God has given you. That's what God used to bring Goliath down. So somebody says, I'm depressed. I will kill myself. No, listen, nobody's looking for me. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. You that God wants you to raise mighty men of valor in your cave, Adulam. You want to go and hang yourself in cave, Adulam. Your priority is wrong. Because David himself was dejected, rejected, abandoned, left alone, pursued by Saul. But David said, you don't understand. There is something I know. There is something in my future. There is something that God has told me. There is something I understand. That when God lifts a man, the man stays lifted. But when man lifts a man, he can be dethroned anytime. Because that man's destiny would be subject to the mood swing of another man. Have you seen somebody help you before? Or have you helped somebody before? And you just felt somehow. And you just told the person, okay, give me back. You did it in secondary school now. You borrowed the guy your water bottle. They say, give me back my water bottle. But when God gives you, when God gives you, and it's God that does it, and you sustain the mindset that brought you there, it's difficult for a person to fall who walks with God. It's impossible. Why? Because what, you know the lessons you learn to get there. You know why David? it was difficult for David to fumble against God on the throne? We know that he sinned with Bathsheba. But the reason why his reign was very different was he knew God. Joseph Unko, he knew God. Daniel Unko, he knew God. Meaning if you don't prioritize God, little things will make mess of you. Because they will become your idols. Is that true? Some people designer is their idols. Once it is a designer, ah, uh, how are you earning 50,000 and you are buying a shoe of 37,000? Who are you? Where will the rest money come from? Uh, the favor of God. Then you go for a prayer program. The, the favor of God. And then you run there for seven days. Oh God, favor me. But your financial, your financial, what's it called? Your, your budget is overdraft. Your budget is no, it cannot sustain you. When your output is greater than your input, you'll be bankrupt. It's a normal thing. When your spending is more than your earning, there's no angel. So there's no miracle money that will come from heaven. What God has given you is what you must manage and multiply. Because when God gives you a thing, he expects you to multiply. Is that true? Aye. Thank you, Jesus. Another principle here is, you see, it is, it is easier to choose. Hmm. Between good and evil than between good and great. Let me explain. When the enemy wants to attack a Christian, a sound Christian, he does not use evil. It will not come as evil. You know why it will not come as evil? Satan knows. Okay, let me ask you a question. Sister Ruth, let's say I'm a G guy. Do you know G guy? Do you know G guy? Of course, G guy don't dress like this. G guy, <laughs> this guy don't wear like They wear shredded jeans. Number one sign. The new clothes. After 30 days, they may throw it in the corner of the house, but at least new clothes. Hallelujah. Then they use bleaching cream a lot. Many of them, amen. amen. They don't use Oriflame, they use the bleaching one. Hallelujah. Now, I'm a G guy. And I said, I want to toast you. Wait, help that. Who is that? <laughs> Stay with me. I want to toast you. And what I want to use, start with my toasting with is. Then you now say, oh. Holy Spirit, only uh, Holy Spirit, no. He may be the one. Holy Spirit can use any means. Holy Spirit can use any means already. Holy Spirit can use any means. Mm. Holy Spirit. Mm. It's easy for you to say what? Will you say yes or no? Yeah, think about it. Think about it. Will you even tell me? Will you even tell me? Because he has been screened out. There's no remedy. You understand? There's no amen, mini, mini man. There's no. But imagine the brother now dresses like me, like now I'm dressed. And I say, my sister, the Lord has spoken to me about you. While I was on the mountain of Gilgal, spending time in the presence of Elohim, I began to commune with um, Jehovah and the Trinity. And I found out that there was a light that beamed upon my soul. And as I beheld your countenance, I saw celestial beauty. And I knew in my Noah that I know what I know, but I may not be able to explain it, but I know that the Lord has joined us together in koinonia and there has to be an amalgamation by the confederacy of heaven and it must kiss earth so that something born out of it will shake time into eternity so that we can bond the world together so are you ready to take my hand in 
I said, okay, so, so go and pray about it. I'll give you time to go pray about it. Now, that's difficult. You may be laughing about it, sister. They know that. You don't know, sisters like a guy that has sweet mouth. At least be able to say something. Don't just say, hallelujah. Be able to use words in a way that say, oh, anyway, I said, I'm giving brothers, the Lord give you understand. I'm telling you, go and tell the brothers in your church that ladies like anyway. Oh, do. Bro, for breed like bro, bro, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Are you stay with me? Are you here to get? Are you to okay, bro? Toby, I'm am I lying? <laughs> now listen, listen. I'm, I'm telling you something. Are you still okay? You are not since you are not here. Let's are you here? Yeah. The reason why it will now be difficult for her to decipher is because. Uh, Satan has now disguised, camouflaged as an angel of light. So he's a kind of light too, but it's not the true light that lighted every man that comes into the world. So it looks like it does not mean it is it. Yeah. And that brother, the way I, it looks like, hey, it looks like uh, even Samuel, the prophet of God, say. This one looks like the anointed of God. Because if somebody did not say it looked like somebody said it's the one. Until God told him, bros, uh, uh, bros, I've rejected him. That means that it is possible to not be designing. That means to not prioritize the voice and the word. Listen, you want to make the right decision for marriage. Is this Bible? Is this Bible? There's no prophet that will tell you is the one. Hello, sir. Is this Bible? You cannot stay with the principles of the word after a while. The word begins to affect your thought pattern. So your mind is already being tuned. You know some young men, he's a lie. Now cruise. The reason why some are eating breakfast is because they are not giving to fasting. They didn't wait. When I mean fasting, I don't just mean abstinence from food. I mean a fasted life. They are the one that will spend 10 hours on Netflix. 6 hours on PS2. Five hours on beauty pageant. Eight hours in hairdresser. Then two hours. Which two, two hours in a whole month studying the Bible. Then they say, I don't know. God is not talking to me. I don't know. I've been seeking God. It's, it's like you. You talk to God on my behalf. The God that you don't have a walk with. How do you want to, with that God, live with a man? Do you know what a man is? You take it. Do you know what a man is? A man is just, oh, uh, people post on Instagram. Are, are you still with my mind? Am I flowing? No. People post on Instagram. Oh, one guy and his babe, they are arguing themselves and speaking in tongues. I say, oh, that's how I want my marriage to be. We just wake up and be speaking in tongues for them on Instagram. <laughs> for the, everything is for the gram. I want to eat fried rice today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the gram. You and your wife have not had one hour in an entire week to even talk and just and play. Everything is, is either is for a photo shoot or we are not talking. And the lady is dying on the inside because she married a church brother that does not know God. Are we pray? Are we pray? Are we pray? If I don't pray, <laughs> uh, not everything is necessary. Do what brings you closer to your dreams daily. Even if you are in business, this message, listen, this message is for you. Anything you are doing is for you. It's for you. Are you an undergraduate? What brings you closer to your dream? Number one, lecture, lecture, lecture. You hear people say, I want to share my testimony. I talk to the Holy Ghost to postpone the lecture. And you know, as God will have it, the lecturer says, it's not coming. My God is great. Second Sunday again, I told God, oh, my first school is here, I'm wasting it. Because when your father and your mother send you to school, they send you to receive water, to receive lecture. To receive lecture. Then out of eight weeks that you should be taught, for three weeks you have not been taught, the lecturer now come and give you six textbooks that look like Ugo si Ugo. Do you know Ugo? Ugo si Ugo? Oh, I like the yellow one. The verbal, I like the verbal one. But the other one, God didn't send us that one. Ugo si Ugo. Then he tells you, go and study everything. I say area of concentration. He say everything is area of concentration. You are now you now go. I say Labanos, Labanos, my father, my God. The Bible says the Holy Ghost. Uh, he will remind us. The Holy Ghost will remind you what you have read, not what you have not read. Hello. Huh. 
They say, when I entered the exam, oh, the enemy shot an arrow, I forgot. It's not an arrow. You were not really prepared. So psychologically, your brain was stressed. Your gray matter was part up. So the tendency to forget in the exam was already higher. It's like high blood pressure. What's the eye? <laughs> Are you here? Problem to one here. Then you now say, bros, if you don't prepare well for anything, you'll be ashamed. Paul says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman. Okay, ask your neighbor. How prepared are you for what you even desire? Ask him. Ask him. Ask her. Funto, ask your neighbor. Ask copper. What do you desire? How prepared are you for it? You know what Jesus said? I have a baptism to be baptized. He says, how strengthened am I until it be accomplished? Meaning, listen, there is a preparation before the glory. If you get what you want now, are you sure you will want what you get? I wrote that. I wrote that one in Equip Volume One some years back. It's there. Go and buy the book. Because the A now is there. It's because you didn't read it. <laughs> anyway, say the A is good. Please keep saying the A. It helps. <laughs> you may want. You may get what you want, but will you want what you get when you get it? Esau said, "Ebin pani o ni oleyo efumini asaroje." Give me. Forget which bed right. For that about bed right. Jacob said, "Okay, that's okay." The Bible says he sorted it with tears. Why? Misplaced priority. He said he sorted it with tears. At least as he has crashed, if God is forgiven, he should give him back. Mm -mm. A man that is in honor and does not know is like the beast of the field that perishes. Are you still here? Let's run. Let's run. Some practical things. Learn to focus on your goals by reducing distraction. Reduce distraction in your life. Some of us, our distraction is too much. The Holy Ghost cannot help us like that. Some of you, both your enemy and your friends are the ones you are chatting with every day. They are distracting. How can you stay on WhatsApp when you should be working? And the person is gossip, gossiping for you on WhatsApp. You know, WhatsApp is a good place to gossip. Is that true? Because there's a way to clear the logs. Or is it logs? Or clear chat. Do you know clear chat? You, know, you can even do sticker of him. There's that one now. The sticker. So you move. <laughs> there's gossip. There's no one you're looking for. It's there. And you have spent six hours on WhatsApp. Do you know for some people, social media directs their lives now. Not God. Not the Bible. Not vision. Not sense. Social media. They don't say on social media, today will be red clothes day. And you'll be surprised. Somebody can go to boutique. I'll go and buy a class. Say, my red clothes challenge. Oh yeah. I'll be dancing in front of a screen. Like, like, <laughs> like somebody that was shot an arrow from the belly of air. An arrow of confusion. He joined on and he'll be dancing and be sweating. So why are you doing? Say, I'm doing the challenge. Today, elderly people will be learning some strange dance. Dance that can break their vertebral column. They'll, they'll be learning it. Then they'll fall down. They say, No, cut that part. I fell down. Put it. They say, Even daddy, on Jassy. That's what you are modeling for your child. Latest dance step. But your child asks you, What is Matthew 7 7? Say, Matthew 7 7. Eh, they didn't teach us that one in school. Mm -mm. What you become will have a spillover effect upon the seed that is on your inside. Any battle you don't win, you postpone it for your children. If including lost, including battle we lost. I hope you know. Check Abraham, check Isaac, check Jacob. Three of them like fear women. Why? Abraham did not win the battle of fear women. Are you together? Are you here? Okay, you are not. Since you are not here, are you here? I'm going to tell you something, but you are not ready. Abraham lied. Isaac lied. Jacob, everybody lied. Okay, they didn't lie. They said something. The Lord give you understanding. God, since God didn't say they lie, why are we? You didn't lie. Invest. One of the things you must do this year. This is February. Invest in transformation. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world. This is the world who schematizes you. And be, be, be transformed. Metamorphosis, right? By the renewing of your mind. It's that big girl. I should be able to ask you. How many books have you read this year? And you should say, okay. Um, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Okay, I've read five books this year. Oh, I've read two books this year. Oh, I'm reading one currently. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, me, book. <laughs> hey, me. Since I let you invest here, I have not read anything. No, let me know. Like, even this paper, I've not read. When Jesus said, Have you not read? How can you be a disciple of Jesus and you are not reading? They are even Paul said, Bring to me my notebooks, my parchment, which I left at trust. Who are you not to read? You are not reading books. Say, I'm a, I'm a kingdom. You know, we put kingdom in behind sometimes carnality. 
I'm a kingdom business mogul. I'm a kingdom school teacher. But they ask you, have you read any book on children? It's a children. Children book. A me children book. Pastor, how are you like this? What do I want to do with children book? I teach children. I don't need children book. Yeah. Then they, the children come and they say, mini, mini, mani, mo. Father has a donkey. You say it's mini, mini, mani, mo. Whereas, originally, it's not mini, mini, mani, mo. But many of us don't even know because that's what you were told. Too. It's mini, mini. It's not mini. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see problem? Then you, you, you tell your child that this is a lamp holder, whereas it's a bulb. That child will carry that into his destiny. On the day we do interview, they ask you, what's that? They say, he is bulb. They say, who thought? He said, my teacher. Don't become the padlock against another person's destiny by your willingness to prepare now. Because if God is counting on you for certain things in the future, and you are not ready yourself now, you will become the enemy of the progress of those you have been sent to. Paul told Timothy, you better prepare yourself and take it to yourself because of those, so that you will save yourself and those that you are sent to. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, in your deliverance lies the deliverance of a generation. Tell your neighbor, in your transformation lies the transformation of your generation. Sharpen your gifts. So I said, buy and read books. Think. Work hard. Sharpen your gift. He says, yes, thou a man that is diligent in his business. He will stand before kings. Hi, I love the word of God. He will stand where, sir? And not in the midst of... That means the Bible knows that there are some men that are just men. Meaning you can be a local champion rejoicing. And say, it's nothing. Diligent, not in another man's business. Some people are diligent in criticizing others. They are not doing anything with their own lives. Hello? If you spend your time tearing others down, it's a sign that you will remain down. Because you don't climb up to tear people down. You are where you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hi. What gifts do you have? What have you started doing with it this year? I can bake. Where's the cake? Hey, I can fry akara. Where's the akara? At least bring for us one Sunday here. Let's eat. Hallelujah. This part of Holy Communion. Hallelujah. I know you think Holy Communion is that bread. That's not Holy Communion. Holy Communion is our gathering. Communion bread is the communion bread. Hallelujah. You can, you can be eating it like snack. It doesn't make it holy. Are you together? The, because the wine, late after service, you other boys will go and drink it. I mean, I, the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> mm. Sharpen your gift. There is space for you. My wife sells books, Christian books. And she just decided, you know, okay, let me go online and push this thing. Now she has met with people that she might never have been able to meet if she was just a school teacher. Why? When God gives you one opportunity, don't think that's the only thing. Most opportunities are only platforms for other doors. Be wise. May God open your eyes. Yeah. What can you do and what are you doing with what you can do? Don't say, I cannot do anything. Think very well. Pray about it. Check. Even if you say you cannot do anything, ask. Look at people. Ask them for feedback. What do you think I can do well? Some of them may tell you, you can do this thing well. You know, there are some things we trivialize that that is the thing you have in your house for your next level. You know, God asked Moses, what is that in your hand? Moses said, this one is a rod. God said, ah! Okay, put it down. Lay it down. When he laid it down, he became a serpent. Meaning Moses has been carrying that which had the potential for a serpent for a long time. But because he could not see, may God open your eyes. Yeah. Can you pray your seat one minute and say, open my eyes, let me see. What you have given me that I have trivialized. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. In Jesus' name we are praying. Do only what is necessary. Do only what is necessary. Some of us, what we are doing is not really necessary. You can delegate it. When I learned the law of delegation, my life changed. There are some things now I don't do again. I know I can hire somebody to do it. I will pay, but they will do it well. Now, if you go and delegate to somebody that will destroy it, it will spoil your name because if it is a good that you should deliver, and the person you delegated to spoiled it, meaning it will spoil your brand name, spoil your name, and you will lose that customer. Is that true? 
But there are certain things you know, okay, this person is competent. Delegate it. So that you can spend your time on other important tasks. We'll still get there, right? You will see what we call must do. Must do is different from may do. Is that true? May do means if I like, if I don't, the body is must. We'll get there. Let's run a little more. Are you blessed? In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, Let us lay aside every weight and everything that does easily beset us. And let us lay aside, sorry, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us lay aside, right? Every weight that does easily beset us. And let us run the race with patience. And then he now says, looking unto Jesus. Meaning, fix your gaze, fix your eyes on the prize. You know where God has shown you that you are going. But the way you are doing now, will you get there like this? Will you get there like this? The way you are wasting your time, will you get there like this? The books you have bought that you have not read. Some people buy books and snap with it, but they will never read it. Listen, a blind man and a man that does not read are actually the same. A man who will not read and a man who cannot read, they are the same. Some of you, the answer to your prayer is in a book you have refused to buy or a book you have refused to read. And the answer will be there with you till eternity. Only God knows how many people have died because of a knowledge that was in the book that was with them and they didn't read it. Are you here? Only God knows. Hi. Do you know the difference between the great and the mediocre is information. There's something somebody knows. Do you know that one of the renowned universities in Nigeria, forget it, is Futa, this Futa. Do you know they have a lot of products out of the country that are doing greatly? You know what? There's something they know that uh, those who are, they don't know. There's something they know. Why is the person a professor? There are informations he has. Is that true? That the undergraduate does not have. Are you here? Yes. The difference between great and mediocre sometimes is access to information. And then you work with that thing. How do I know that you guys will be great? How do I know? The information I'm giving you is quality. If you use it, you'll be great. Tell your neighbor, if you use it, you'll be great. <laughs> Some of you need to go and get sticky notes and write out your to-do list. Not to make yourself feel excited. After writing it down, then do it. So people will write out. 20, some will even post on and say, 20 things I'll do this year. They've not done anything. See, now they've not done one. That this year, I will write my first book. Ah, oh, this year, I will dance. This year, what? Where is it? Cut out every distraction. Live with intentionality. I was just pondering on my sermon today and I thought about it. Who can tell me what you often find in a river? Abigail, try to tell me. One thing you find in a river or a stream or an ocean. One animal that is inside water. Oh yeah. Uh, I gave you one. I gave you exponent. When I say animal, I say animal. Okay. Fish. Do you know fish? Who has eaten fish here before? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, I know you know the breed. I don't know the breed. Do you actually know that? Um, what is the difference between a fish that floats and a fish that swims? What's the difference? Uh -huh. Life. Okay, that's powerful. That's true. But there's something I'm looking for. Huh? Oh, he takes in water. Oh, well, you are from Futa. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that. Okay, thank you. But, but there is something I want to bring out. You are all correct. They use their fins and all that. The fish that floats is dead. It's true, right? What it actually means is that the fish that floats is not intentional. The fish that swims is intentional. You know what that means? Without intentionality, you are a living dead. You will be floating because the water, the current of the water goes left and it goes right. It goes everywhere. A ship that is without a rudder, anywhere the water goes and the wind blows, you follow. But when you are intentional about your life, you will use the winds of life to your advantage. Hi. The reason why adversity for some of us, no matter how much you try to put us down, we are like a rubber ball, rubber ball inside an ocean. If you take us to the depth of the ocean, because of intentionality, we are coming back stronger. It's impossible to leave a rubber ball on that ocean and you think by the time you get out and you are running home, the ball will still be there. It will come out. Why? Because there is a law that is at work. It's like the law of thermodynamics. Are you here? Are you here? Do you know the law of gravity? That state that everything that goes up more water. But in space, that law is suspended. Why? Because the introduction of a new law annuls the existence of the previous law. Meaning that when the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is on your inside, you have been made free from the law of sin and death. 
And tell your neighbor, I'm foolishness. I will not be foolish again. I've been intentional in my life. Go and take a stock. This whole week that just went, it's possible you were only intentional for three hours. Even the sleep, you were not intentional. You just mistakenly slept. I woke up and said, ah, asunji, oh. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay, oh. Eh? I'm serious. Some people are not intentional about sleeping. They just say, ah. So anytime sleep comes, there's nothing like that. If I tell myself, I want to sleep, I will sleep. Intentionality. Listen, and when you start becoming intentional, some people that struggle, struggle with inferiority complex, once you start becoming intentional, your inferiority complex will begin to die. Say, all those esteem, ah, I'm not, forget it. It's not your temperament, it's about intentionality. Go and check it. People who are really intentional, they're often bold. There's this courage about them. It's not pride. They know what they are doing with their lives. Are you here? Uh, are you together? Can you take two more? Can you take two more? No. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, because of time. I like to keep to time. Ah, we're on this one, and this is the real stuff. Uh, but I don't know, maybe next week. Let's see. If you come early next week, we'll know what to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Can we look at verse 24 to 27 because of time? Are you getting blessed tonight? Yes, if you are there, say amen. amen. All right. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but is there everybody that receives a prize? No, not all receives the prize. One. So run in a way. Run in a manner that you will obtain. Live your life in a way that at the end of your journey, it is a crown that we wait for you, not a cross. Live your life in a way that by the time you are breathing your last on the face of the earth, and you are breathing your first before Jehovah in eternity, it will be well done, you will hear. No. Wahala. Depart. Look at the next verse, please. And every man that striveth for the mastery, hey, is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are an incorruptible crown. You know what that means? Everything the Christian does in time will count for him in eternity. Let me even put it this way. Everything a human being does in time, because everybody will stand before God, whether good or bad, is that true? And they will give account what they have done with their bodies. Do you know what that means? If I do something that will count in eternity, I will do it better. If I know that everyone is watching what I'm doing, do you not think I will do it better? Meaning I will not do eye service in church. And I will not do eye service before the world. But I will do him service. Because I know that I'm worshipping for the audience of one. Are you here? Do you know that your job. Next time when they tell you don't take your job serious. Know that it is Lucifer that is whispering to you. Because your job is an extension of your conviction. Your, how you treat your job shows what kind of a Christian you are. Whether you are a quality Christian or a poor Christian. I don't want to sing the latest song. I don't want to buckle in the crowd. I just want to make you smile. I'm right or wrong. I don't care who try to calm me down. I just you know, you know the chorus. In my life, be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Because you see, you see, in John 17, Jesus was about to die. And we, he prayed the Lord's prayer. He said, he didn't say our father was in heaven now. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify now thy son. That the son may glorify you. Meaning that as you are, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. He said, Whatever you do, do to the glory of God. Meaning, if you are eating or drinking, talking or interacting, chatting or thinking, reading or writing, walking on the way or discussing with conductor, everything, if it is to the glory of God, is a kind of worship that heaven will not reject. Meaning, you are not serious in your workplace, but they are giving you salary, the same scale of salary, and you are not putting in the same amount of work you should put. You are not representing Christ well. Unless in your workplace they tell you, okay, you can tone down. The, unless they tell you, don't tone down. Why? Somebody's looking at the way you are witnessing Christ and may turn away from Christianity in years to come because he found out that many Christians talk about Christ but they are not like him. Take the last one. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Your life will change after this house because you will do something with what you are learning. I therefore so run. 
not as uncertainly. You see that? Not without direction. Not fight I. As one that beat the air, shadow boxer, but I keep under my body. So one sure way, huh? To have the right priority and to accomplish your goals for the week, for the month, for the year, is self-discipline. Self-discipline. Second Timothy 1 7. God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. Is that true? Self-control. That word sound mind is self-control. I know you use it in exam. Sound mind, I'm intelligent. Thank God, boy. Self-control. Meaning you can put your flesh under. You can tame your tongue. You can tell yourself, you know, some has it happened to you before? You are reading for exam, and the exam is tomorrow. And you know you have not covered the syllabus, and sleep is coming. What do you do to the sleep? Do you say sleep anyhow, 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 sleep? If you don't, if you don't come, is that what you do? What do you do? You slap yourself. <laughs> Some of you are not brutal. Eh? You will tell yourself, Larry, if you fail, you, I'm at your way <laughs> if you fail this exam. Sometimes you walk around, is that true? Sometimes you don't even walk around. You sit and put your leg inside water. Some of you, you were sleeping, you put candle on, and the candle burnt your lamp. Your head was still there. Only God saved you. Your head would have been hollowed. As you are thinking, your name needs to be hallowed. Your head. It would have been a mark for your children today. <laughs> you say, when I was pressing in the spirit, you lie. You were sleeping. <laughs> you were sleeping. Some of you that have beard. <laughs> I'm monony. <laughs> beard. But discipline. Discipline yourself for where you are going. Listen, tell your neighbor, start acting like where you are going. You say you want to be a housewife. You wear mini skirt. You cannot even bend down. You have to almost need that as a muscle. What's your problem? Who sent you? You can't climb back. You need, they need to carry you one hand, one leg. I carry you like Buddha and put you on the bike. What's your problem? Hey, it's not about modesty. It's not about morality. It's about liberty. Liberty without self-control will become the greatest cause of that person. Because even in the garden of Eden, where there was liberty, there was restraint. When you have vision, you know that although you have liberty in Christ, all things are lawful, but for me, not all things are expedient. There are some things I will not do. Not that I cannot do it, but I will not do it. It does not help me accomplish my own vision. And it all about it, it all about it, anywhere. They invite you. They say there's one club, a new club, they just open. New club, they just open for Valentine Love Day. Who told you that it's Valentine Love Day they are doing in club? How many lovers do you see in club? Bible lovers, are you together? You saw Abraham and Sarah, your father's in. He said they've not created club. That's why who told you? Sodom and Gomorrah, I don't know they had club. You don't know? You Okay. Are you here? <laughs> Ooh, you know. What do you think Rehab was doing upstairs? You don't know some club they have upstairs. Are you here? The Lord give you on that. Let me give you one more. So discipline, that's it. That's it. That's discipline. Discipline yourself. The kinds of friends you choose. Stop working with people that don't have anywhere they are going. How do you know people that don't have anywhere they are going? The only thing they tell you in chat is, hello, how are you? How was your night? Have you eaten today? What are you wearing? Oh, thank God. Bye-bye. The next day, the same thing. What kind of a vicious cycle of mediocrity is that? Can, I need men that can think. I need women that can think. We should be able to discuss issues. Are you together? Not Abado and Buluba. Are you there together yet? Somebody has sense. You want to marry a man that does not have sense? You're not taking to your father. Your father now asking one simple question. He's not saying, eh, yes, sir, you see, um, eh, you see, you see what? My own children know. They already know. From the womb, they know. You see what? The Lord give you understanding. Yeah. Finally, expand your associations. This word I'm giving you, this final one, huh? This is an entire page that I've not touched at all. Maybe next week we'll touch on it because we need to sink it deep. Are you here? It must end times are very well. See, let me tell you this. Limit your association, then expand your association. It looks contradictory, but it's not. It's the same. What do I mean by limit your association? Cut off from any unproductive friendship in this season. Listen, you are getting old now. You don't know. You say you are still 10. Are you 10? Are you 10? Are you 20? Cut off. It's true that iron sharpens iron. Iron does not sharpen wood. It cuts wood. Is that true? The brother, the countenance of his friend. Two are better than one. Two with sense are better than one. Not just any two. Hello. I'm paying money. I'm paying God. Who depend though? 
Because the children of Israel, they say, kill Jesus. One pay God in Israel. Eh? They gather together and say, kill Jesus. So, all money, majority carries the vote. Majority will say. That's why I'm bothered. Those ones that they are in, 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 importing from Chad and different places to come and vote for you. Those ones are not made. They're mixed multitude. If they had sense, they will not come. Are you here? They have sense. How do, how do you? You know, your election is coming soon now. Before we say there's no service, <laughs> your election is coming soon. You cannot vote for somebody that does not have sense. Hello? I mean, I'm only saying, Abby, can we all vote for someone that now says? If you're a lecturer in school, the one that does not really have sense, you don't like his lecture. Is that true? Somebody will now rule you for four years. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, eight years. Without sense. Without sense. Do you know by eight years, all of you that didn't have BS, you'd have had BS. Some of you, your BS that start only white. Some of you are already having grandchildren right there. And you want to leave an inheritance of pain because of the foolish decision you are making now. Tell your neighbor, God for me. Right. You say, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. The way we know the quality of the ruler is, are the people rejoice? Now, let me ask you, are the people rejoicing now? So, who is ruling now? Uh, it's not the government that is ruling, no. It's not the government that is ruling, no. It's the Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Because you see, institutions do not give character to themselves. It is individuals that give character to institutions. It's what you are that you bring to the table. It's not, eh, they forced him. What did they force? It's what you are. Tell them the best what you are. It's what you are. It's what you are. Limit your association and then what? Expand your association. What does that mean? Listen, it's not wrong to delete some people from your contact. Hello, sir. Uh, it's because I've done it before. Hallelujah. I'm long suffering like Jesus, but some people will distract you. If you keep looking at their status, you will never get there. Like Lord, you will look back one day. When a girl of 14 years is showing herself in a Ferrari, even her entire grandparents, if they gather their money together, they cannot buy Ferrari. Then she sits down with a Ferrari with one small 20-year-old boy that is actually stealing. There are some that do legit business. Do you understand? But this one is quick rich schemes. And then she opens her legs. You already know. You cannot get there like that without something. Are you together? She opens her legs and she's inside AC. And then she's singing, I'm coming down from my Maserati. And I go wear Bugatti. And I and, and as she's singing it, you that you don't say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, you look. Ah. Ah. Then you say, bolo jurewa. Baba o. Then you start, you start clapping your hand. Oh, better sing it by prayer point. You want to Suddenly, something else was introduced that will corrupt your mind. Delete their contact. Uh, let them see my own. Uh, the best, okay, if you want to try for them, mute their own status, but let them be seeing your own. James says, shed light, dodge darkness, dodge it. Why dodge it? Some of you are on TikTok, you are watching them shake bomb bomb. Hey. Hey. What? what did I get? Right? What I do on TikTok is when I post my own stuff, as I'm posting, mm, because there is impossible to be on TikTok for five minutes. I know see mama. You see, uh, it's impossible. Well, eh? it's impossible. Oh, she's it. It's not possible. Are you together? One time, one biscuit or one app like that too. One app, biscuit or video editing app. That one, if they did not shave, but oh Jesus. One day I said, wait. Is it a video editing app or another app? Man, destroy me now. Some of you go to Italy. That's why when I go to Italy, I don't watch their TV again. I don't need their TV. Why? It must be a blue film that they put song inside. You know those songs that those uh, people sing? Those people of the world. You know it's blue film actually. Before when you were young, it was that thing was blue film. But now they are even dancing it. Beyonce released one. You are, you are happy. Hey, let me see. Uh, I want to pick something there for the kingdom. There's nothing there to pick for the kingdom. It's a gate that will ring your soul. Don't, don't assess it. Because all of them are priestess of darkness. You don't know what they have paid allegiance to. So some of them say they are Christian today. Everybody will say, wow, glory to God. Rihanna is a Christian. Beyonce is a Christian. And then you give a new convert or somebody that is even not yet a new convert. You give him mic to start doing ministry. You are, the, you are part of the destroyer of their souls. Because they are not ready. They should sit down first for like three years and learn. Hallelujah. Then expand your associations. 
Some of you need to start increasing the quality of your friends. The kind of friends you have now, oh, they lower, lower by it. Because none of your friends are doing business. None of your friend has one million in his account. One million. You see, even you say, eh, hey, one million, Tony. Ah, eh, buy your coni, coni. Eh, no, 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 no. Eh, wow, do I like me? No, I don't like me. Okay, let's say some people do that both here now, and they say, okay, pastor, don't call anybody. Uh, maybe some of the elders say, don't call anybody. Young people, let's gather one million. You say, one million, <laughs> one million. Pastor, me, I have three hundred naira. It's my widow's might. It's my widow's might. Forgetting that actually the Bible says that widow's might is all that the widow had. How come it's your own 2,000 that is your widow's might and not your 25,000? He says, my own widow's might, oh, pastor. Expand your association. Listen, there's nothing wrong. Ladies, you see ladies, whether online or physically, that are doing well and they are living the Christian life, connect with them. You see that? Like their post, talk to them, engage them, take their contact. One thing I know is that once you take them from social media and bring them on your WhatsApp, you're already closer in a way. Is that true? It's easier to interact. You meet a commissioner. Don't just say, commissioner, commissioner, your highness, anything for the boys. Which boys at this age? Which boys? Which boys are you doing again? Oh. Are you here? Some of you should have contact of your VC, of your lecturers. They should have, they should have your number. But no. It's only the <laughs> even your class governor, you don't have this number. Who are your contacts? What will be the quality of your life after this? This week, when you are coming back, let there be quality to your life. I'm praying for somebody that this week now you will have a to-do list, you will maximize time. Yeah. Your life will count for the glory of God, yeah. both in time and in eternity. Yeah. Rise to your feet, let's pray one prayer point. Are you blessed, somebody? Yes. If you are blessed, shout hallelujah. This is a prayer you want to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your mercy, I receive wisdom for time redemption. Go ahead and pray now. Father, by your mercy, I receive wisdom. You can rehearse the things you have learned even in prayer and say concerning this matter, concerning this one. And then who dabu we no? And then who dabu we? Oh, you mean it? I thought I get joy for it. And then who dabu we no? If we jale, who do we na na be? Kada haya. And then who dabu we no? Lift your hands to the heavenly. The Lord says I should bless you. We are one year today. The Lord says I should bless you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Please let me put it. The Lord says I should bless you. Lift your hands to the heaven. Thank you. Sing this song one time and then I will, and I will release an utterance. Believe it from your heart. Who is like Unto thee, O Lord, who is like sing it from your spirit. It's like you, you are glory. You are here always. One more time. Who oh, is like? Sing it one more time. Give a bow, Mahaya.
thank you. Let the lifting of our hands be as the evening sacrifice. For unto you shall the gathering of your people be. Let the utterance of our lips rise as a sweet incense. It's unto you, it's unto you, our king. I pray for these ones today. As they are here physically and even our family online following now. Witnessing one year in our Sunday service in this ministry here in Akure. I'm praying that in the next 12 months, as they apply the truth of the word of God, let their lives change like day and night. Amen. Oh, thank you, Father. Ever living, ever present. Yahweh, Akabaya the Adaba, ever living, ever present. Yahweh, ever present. Yahweh, you reign on I, Adonai, Adonai, we worship your Mosa. Father, I pray, as many here who are due for favor, who are due for the next level, who the enemy has frustrated them for a long time, they see that they carry destiny, but they have been hindered. I pray now, by the same hand that wrote Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ulfasi, by the hand that brought the accent out of the water, by the hands that raises men and keeps them there, let the favor of God locate you now. Oh, where help is cast in career, in health, in ministry, in your workplace. Let help locate you. Go by a basata makate karadiata li a brande subre capulia brakataya. It's the Lord that led your feet here. I pray from henceforth, may you be in the right place at the right time. Oh, ah, mahate. May you be in the right place at the right time. Oh my God. Oh my God. The Lord is doing a new thing. Praise Him. The Lord, praise Him. In our sanctuary, praise Him. In the firmament. Father, I pray. There's somebody under the sound of my voice today. There is an addiction that wants to ruin your life. You have taken it to God many times. Ah, but in this season, let His grace be sufficient for you. Receive capacity to overcome. In the name of Jesus. Ah, I say receive capacity to overcome. The heavens are open over you. What the Lord has said concerning you will come to pass. Oh, yeah, the God who opens the shore, no man can shut. The Lord said, This month is a month of open doors, it's a month of open doors for somebody. Oh, wow, it's a month of open doors for somebody. I see the Lord opening doors for somebody. Wow, there's somebody on the side of my voice in 12 months. You would have left the country to do what God wants you to do. Yeah. I see it. I see it already. I see it. Yes, you I speak to you as one who has received mercy and as a shepherd sent to you in this season of your life. Everywhere you need wisdom, may wisdom not be scarce. Kai. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let the month of February be your month of favor. Let this year be your year of transformation. Let this year be your year of righteousness, peace, and joy. The Lord says in this ministry, in this season, we will celebrate like never before. It's a season of celebration. 
most blessed and most glorious. The age. Almighty, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hear me. The Lord said, in this season, in this ministry, everyone truly connected to us, truly connected to us. Mark my word. Let God be true and every man a liar. Everyone truly connected in the heart and in obedience to the scripture. May the remaining 10 months of this year be your best. Amen. You know, in the ministry now, we're having very powerful testimonies. And as I post on WhatsApp, so that's a, some, some of them I cannot even post. It's, ah, the testimony that will bring tears of joy to your eyes. It's about to happen for you. Amen. Brother Peter, lift your hands. I see in the realm of the spirit that there is an hindrance. You would have gone farther than here. But the enemy, through carelessness and distractions, does not want you to get there. Every mark of disfavor, the workings of darkness, manipulations in the realm of the spirit that makes those that should help you misunderstand you. From now and forth, I remove that embargo. Yeah. You will experience some common speed. Yeah. <laughs> ah, for somebody else, this is your service. Yeah. You will never be the same again. Yeah. Olua, Olua, et obi loba o. Worship him now. Olua, 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 Olua. All right, hear this. Our singles, let the Lord begin to lead the right men to you. Let the Lord give you wisdom to make the right decision. Let the Lord help you to follow the right protocol. Amen. And let your homes be beautiful. Amen. Ah, from the tail end of this year and beginning majorly from next year, we'll be having many weddings in this ministry. Father, we'll give you praise. Father, we'll give you praise. Sing the last song as we worship him. Our God. He's an awesome God, he is. 